have my time was running wild a million dead end streets and every time I thought I got it made it seemed the taste was not so sweet so I turned myself to face me but I've never caught a glimpse how the others must see the faker I'm much too fast to take that test Ch-ch-ch-changes Ch- Turn and face the strain Ch-ch-changes Don't wanna be a richer man Never leave the stream of warm and permanent sand So the days float through my eyes But still the days seem the same And these children that you spit on As they try to change their worlds Are immune to your consultations They're quite aware of what they're going through Changes Turn and face the strain Changes Don't tell them to grow up on out of it And my time was running wild A million dead end streets And every time I thought I got it made It seemed the taste was not so sweet So I turned myself to face me But I've never caught a glimpse How the others must see the faker I'm much too fast to take that test Ch-ch-ch-changes Turn and face the strain Ch-ch-changes Don't wanna be a richer man But never leave the stream of warm and permanent sand So the days float through my eyes But still the days seem the same 
And these children that you spit on as they try to change their worlds are immune to your consultations. They're quite aware of what they're going through. Ch -ch -ch changes Turn and face the strain. Ch -ch changes Don't tell them to grow up and out of it. And my time was running wild A million dead end streets And every time I thought I got it made It seemed the taste was not so sweet So I turned myself to face me But I've never caught a glimpse Of how the others must see the faker I'm much too fast to take that test Ch-ch-ch-changes Turn and face the strain Ch-ch-changes Don't wanna be a richer man Hello friends and fans, welcome to Music Beats Cancer, virtual tribute to David Bowie. I just wanted to ask just really quickly, we've got a lot of people watching the chat and trying to, to um, just sort of understand where you folks are from and, and things like that. Can you just uh, let us know where are you logging in from? Where are you uh, signing in from? And uh, I'm your host for the evening. My name is Don Davis. I'm the founder of d Digital Media. And uh, we're hosting this event. I also host a podcast called the Life Science Success Podcast and run a consulting company in life sciences focused on helping companies um, that are early startups in this space. And we'll talk a little bit more about them, I'm sure, throughout the night as well. The Music Beats Cancer Virtual Tribute Series celebrates the life and legacy of music icons who passed away from cancer. So David Bowie was born on January 8th of 1947, and he died of liver cancer on January 10th of 2016. Throughout my life, um, David Bowie's music really is, has kind of followed me around since I was probably, you know, a, a, even a preteen uh, all the way through to this point in my life. And so constantly, you know, I, I, I've run into songs like Heroes and Changes and uh, several of the songs that will be played here tonight, like Fame and uh, Space Oddity. So I, I'm greatly uh, appreciative of Music Beats Cancer and all the work they're doing, the artists that we're going to have tonight performing uh, for us, as well as, as just the, the level of focus that's currently going into all of this as well. And so um, one, of the, one of the things that I wanted to also just... Uh, you know, mention is that, you know, David Bowie was always known as somebody that stood out from the crowd. Um, you know, he, he really enjoyed 
um, you know, sort of pointing out things that molds that needed to be broken. And that's one of the greatest things that, uh, that I think all of us enjoy about him overall. Um, and this quote about him just liking, you know, crazy art and most of the time out there, out there music and just the key things that he focuses on in terms of, of really making sure that he changed things overall in the industry. And so I greatly appreciated uh, that as well with, with uh, David Bowie and the level of focus that he had. And so before I introduce our first uh, uh, musician, I wanted to come back to uh, the, my co-host uh, for the night. And so I wanted to just quickly introduce James Early. And so James uh, is joining us as well. And so uh, let me just make sure that, that we can hear, uh, hear you, James. I can hear you. They can't hear you yet, but now they can. There you go. Now they'll be able to hear you. Awesome. Well, Perfect. I'm happy to be here. My name is James Early, and I'm excited about all of this. Anything, you know, all things David Bowie, you know, I'm in. I'm, I'm such a fan all, you know, my whole life. I'm a lifelong musician. And, uh, you know, growing up playing music, when I was aware, made aware of David Bowie, I immediately fell in love with this guy and his music and his direction and everything about him. So this is this is big for me. I'm excited, man. Yeah, I mean, he's... Um... He definitely, you know, has had an impact, and I, I mean, I, I think you're you're playing it a little, um, you know, easy on me uh, as well. So, you know, James is a multi platinum producer, um, and James, do you want to talk a little bit about the artists that that you've produced before? Well, I'm a lifelong musician and a multi instrumentalist. I've been playing, you know, music ever since I can remember. Uh, my mother is a she played when I was a child, my mother played bass and guitar. And so I learned, I learned drums first and I grew up watching her do that. And it just fell in love with everything. And so after guitar lessons and cello lessons and all of this, I kind of wound up settling on the bass as well as the guitar. She taught me that. And not long after that, I was blessed about, you know, trying to work to find how I can get in the studio, how I can become an engineer. I was lucky enough to get a job working in a, in a studio with the lead singer of a group called Confunction. And um, he also a multi-instrumentalist and sound engineer himself. He taught me how to produce and record. So from there, we were lucky enough to get a client uh, that uh, out of the Bay Area, his name is uh, MC Hammer. And MC <laughs> Hammer, he used us to record his uh, his album. And his he, after the album was done, he got signed to Capitol Records. So basically, we were all signed to Capitol Records at that point. And I got to work with him, do all of his hits. One of his big hits was You Can't Touch This. That was our first really, really big hit, You Can't Touch This, which everybody knows that song. And then uh, Too Legit to Quit was a huge, huge, massive hit. And, you know, uh, all told, all totaled up the um, sales from Hammer have exceeded over 50 million sales worldwide. So he's probably the biggest selling rapper of all time. So from there, I got to work with In Vogue and I produced some songs on them, wound up touring with them, uh, open for Luther Vandross. And, uh, you know, just all these different things were happening that were great. And along the way, you know, the, the phone rang and I was... I got a call from David Bowie's company. They wanted me to work with him. So that's kind of where I am now, you know. And that's what brought you here. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm honored to get to work with you. And, uh, you know, it's great to, that we get to be here tonight, you know, together. Um, you know, one of the, the questions I guess I have is, you know, the, the song that you worked on producing with him. You know, can you tell us a little bit more about the music that you worked on with David Bowie? Oh, the song. Okay, so what happened is I got a call from Bowie's company, not him at first, and they said that they wanted me to work on a song for David Bowie. And of course, you know, and I've been in this industry now, you know, years, many, many years and got and I've worked with many famous people. But when I get the call from Bowie, I'm like, this, this is you can't be real. There's no way that David Bowie's calling me to work on a song. I was ready to hang up. I thought it was a prank. And so anyway, after uh, a few calls, they, they finally convinced me that it was real. And uh, they said, Mr. Bowie's working on a song and he would love for you to help him finish it. And um, so 
he they sent me the song that he had started and they wanted me to add some things and maybe subtract some things just make it you know bring it into fruition with with david bowie which i still couldn't believe so i did some work at home and then i sent the a rough mix back to them and they uh they said uh, ultimately they said david bowie loves what you did but he would love for you to fly to los angeles so and mix it down there so i did i went to a studio mixed it in la and and uh, we gave him the rough mix and he got a hold of it. And um, he said he loved what I did uh, ultimately. And it wound up on, on one of his albums, man. And I, I couldn't believe it. It's a song called Jump They Say. And uh, it's a great song that he wrote about his uh, deceased brother. And it's just a lovely, uh, a, really a love letter to the loss of his brother. You know, so I'm like double, double honored to be working on a David Bowie song that means that much to him. I think he, I mean, didn't he produce like three songs or something to, you know, sort of, sort of focused on his brother? It seems to me like he was, like he did this, um, like he had multiple, um, multiple songs that were all focused on his brother. Yeah, he might have. I don't know about the other ones. I'm aware of the one I worked on, but I, I would totally believe it. Uh, you know, David being a prolific songwriter. Yeah, I would imagine he wrote uh, quite a few songs about his brother who meant everything to him, obviously, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, OK, well, very good. Um, so I I just need to do one quick thing. And this is a bit odd, but it's because we're live and because we're streaming and things like that. I mean, I'm hearing that, uh, that people aren't, aren't hearing. Oh no, no. I'm hearing comments about jump. They say, and how much they like, like jump, they say, so they're definitely hearing you, James. So I just wanted to, to make sure, um, you know, folks in the chat, can you just leave just a, one quick message and just say, Hey, you know, that, uh, that you can hear James. That's that just want to make sure, but, uh, yeah, you know, we're we watching the chat. Make sure you can hear me testing one too. Hello. <laughs> oh, we can. I think I'm I'm pretty sure that they can hear you because they're comment commenting about uh, jump. They say so. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there we go. All right. So um, I wanted to come back as well and just uh, you know also just mention really quickly. Um, you know, if you've had an encounter yourself. Uh, with David Bowie, um, can you just leave us a comment in the chat and let us know uh, that you've that you've also um, you know had an encounter with David Bowie? If you saw him live in concert, if you saw him in passing, it'd be great to uh, great to see that as well. You know, from you. So if you could just let us know that, and then uh, with that, James, I'm gonna you know, say that we, why don't we get started with the music? So would you mind introducing our first artist? Yes. Uh, except for, I'm going to say this first to you, which is um, meeting David Bowie, which happened after I did the song. I have to share that with you real quick since we're on that topic. Um, that was phenomenal because what happened is I, I sent, I did the work and he, I hadn't met him yet. He just was kind of like, you know, a shadow <laughs> he was getting the information or the tracks from me, but I hadn't met him yet. And then so once he did receive it, they yeah, they sent me notification that he loved it and he wanted he wanted me to fly to um Los Angeles to go to the video shoot for the song. The video that he shot for Jump they say, which was shot at Paramount Pictures on the sound stage. And so I I I had to take my brother with me cuz I was like, you know, no one's going to believe this. I have to have a witness. So I brought my brother down. We flew down to LA and uh you know, I'm, I'm in the Bay Area, so I flew down to L.A., and it was just incredible going into Paramount Pictures anyway. That's, you know, legendary place. And then, you know, you go in there, and David Bowie's shooting the video, but they invited me in. An assistant came and got us and took us to uh, a different room and set us down, and they said, uh, Mr. Bowie will come in and as soon as he gets a break. And so, like, only about 10 minutes later, he shows up, and he comes in, and yes, it was like you could see this guy, and he, he, had, a, he had a glow for sure. And it was David. He said, hey, hey, James, how are you? It's great to meet you. I love what you did. And all. I was like, oh, my God, it's really him. I couldn't believe it. And just long story short, we sat down and we talked and we had, we hugged and we had a great time talking. He, he actually spoke to me and my brother about industry stuff, gave us advice. It was really incredible to meet this gentleman who's a brilliant businessman and come to find out family man and all these other things, you know, that you, you never know with a rock star, as you know, it could be anything, you know, but this guy was really awesome and loving and really cool. 
to hang out with and talk to. So I, you know, I'll never forget that experience for the rest of my life, man. And, you know, the world is certainly a better place for having had David Bowie lived in it, you know, and his spirit lives on through the music, which we're obviously celebrating today, you know, unfortunately through the loss of cancer, which is, this is what this really is about, but, you know, he was brilliant and I think he's here with us in spirit. I certainly feel him here now. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. That it was a beautiful story. And, um, yeah, I mean, just a, a, a minute, an amazing personality that I've seen from afar. I could only imagine seeing him up close. Yeah, no, it's great. And I'm honored and uh, I will carry it with me. So onward and upward though. And so now moving on, uh, we have the artist, the amazing talent, talented and lovely Miss Ariel Marin from, uh, the Bay area. She's, uh, a multi octave, uh, I think she has four octave range so and fun. she just so happens to be my better half as well. So I am honored to be with her today and we're gonna perform some music for you. Uh, Miss Ariel, say hello to everyone. Hello everyone, how are you? Yes, and we also have our guitarist Dylan, he's gonna uh, sit in with us and we're gonna jam some stuff for you. Some really cool, really cool songs. Starting with, what song we're we gonna do first? What song? Fame. We're not starting off with fame, right? Yes. All right. Let's, Let's go. go. Don't forget to yeah. put it back there. Ready? Want One, to hear it? Here it goes. Three, four. <laughs> Oh, 
So fun. Where did Don go? Supposed to talk about fame a little bit. Or should we chit chat? I, I think we're supposed to chit chat here. Yeah, go ahead. I you can, won't be able to see me, but I, I'm the host behind the scenes now. You can go ahead. Man behind the curtain, the Wizard of Oz. Yes, you are. All right. You know, uh, Don, that song "Fame" means so much to me because it was just a huge. You know, Ariel's too young to remember, but I was but a tyke when the song came out myself. But what a great, great song "Fame" is. It uh, kind of helped to marry um, David's audience because uh, prior to that, he'd been really, he had this huge rock following already. You know, everybody loved him probably in the pop uh, region as well. But in R&B music, when that song Fame came out, it just made everybody crazy. It was a huge hit in all clubs, black and white clubs, you know, American Bandstand and Soul Train <laughs> featured those songs. As a matter of fact, David was one of the first a uh, white artist to be uh, featured on Soul Train, which was a huge deal, him and Elton John, actually. And uh, it just, you know, again, it crossed the color lines and we didn't care. It was just great music. And, uh, you know, come to find, though, that that song was really a collaboration between uh, David Bowie and John Lennon of the Beatles. Um, John is actually singing background vocals on the song. He's playing guitar and he's playing piano on the track. So if you get a chance, you know, pull it up and listen to the original. It's incredible. And it's it's certainly the funkiest song that David Bowie ever did. And he did some great stuff. But it's the funkiest song, I believe, that he did ever. And ironically, I think it's also the funkiest song that John Lennon ever did. Yeah, I and, think it's, I, I mean, I definitely think it breaks, it definitely breaks that mold again. But where I remember it most is from Soul Train. So, I mean, I can remember as a kid just going, you know, what is this? You know, right. that's where I can remember it from. Um, I just wanted to mention really quickly. So we got some folks in the chat. Um, Paul says that he met him at a radio station he worked at. Uh, he shook his hand and the, uh, that he signed his Aladdin Sane LP. Um, he also saw the first U.S. Ziggy Stardust tour at Long Beach Arena. So just wanted to mention that really quickly. We've got a lot of, a lot of traffic here on the chat. And while you guys are making great music and bantering back and forth about the things that inspire you, um, I'm going to go back behind the scenes and chat with folks on the chat. So that's where, that's where I'll be. And I'll let you guys, you know, kind of, you know, talk about, uh, cause you and Ariel really should talk about, you know, what, what sort of an inspiration was, uh, David Bowie to her. Okay. Well, All she's right. going to talk about that right now. I mean, I, I um, being that we collaborate on music, Ariel and I, all the time, you got to know that he inspires much of what we do anyway, uh, whether we're working on our own material or doing cover songs, even of other artists. You can't help but think about how David Bowie did it and how cool he was when he did it and how he uh, was an innovator in music in his look, as well as in the sound of music or the sounds, I should say, plural, that he would come up with in these different great songs, great energy, brilliant man. If you look at any interview when he speaks, this guy is brilliant. And I promise you, uh, way more brilliant than most, uh, you know, maybe first might might think. Uh, what a great man he was to meet. But yeah, his music really speaks for it. He loved dance music and he loved to make people happy. So it's just, for me, it's just fun. And I, I love doing it and love continuing to do it with Ariel and others you know, so happy to be here. And, uh, you know, we, like I said, when we go on stage, we think about what would David do, you know? And I'll, I'll chime in since we're talking about inspiration. Um, David was huge in that he was one of the few human beings that could dress androgynously and pull it off. And uh, he was a man of many colors. So for me, if you can tell, I'm big into colors, so that's a huge inspiration for me. Um, but on a more serious note, he was a huge advocate for people of color, and he is a big reason why uh, MTV and now other music uh, channels and stations play music of color. One thing I remember uh, from childhood is him, him interviewing on MTV, and he actually... <laughs> check the host and just straight up said, why is it that you'll play white artists, but you won't play videos that uh, black artists have created. 
and he stood up against the system and uh, is a big reason why music is the way it is now. And so that really stood out to me. And this next song that uh, we're going to do is actually my pick for one of my favorite David Bowie songs. And I believe it's the first David Bowie song I heard as a child, since we're talking about the, the age gap. When I was a young girl, this is the song that I remember uh, on MTV and on the radio. And so uh, want to hear it? Here it goes. Let's do it. And what was it called? Let's dance. Mm, mm. Right. No, no, no. Is it? Is it? Let's dance. Yeah, we're gonna do. It let's is. Dance. It is. Let's dance. That's that's the one I picked. And yes. on that note, <laughs> on that note, if you want to dance while we're playing it, please dance along with us. Absolutely, so shimmy in your chairs at home. Dance like no one's watching because no one is. So, and it, even if they are, you know. One, two, three, four. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, woo! Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Let's dance to the song they're playing on the radio. Let's sway while color lights up your face. Let's sway. Sway through the crowd to an empty space. If you say run, I'll run with you. If you say hi, we'll hide. Cause my love for you break my heart in two you should fall into my arms tremble like a flower let's dance and you should fall. Let's dance. Feels right in fall. Let's pray. You could look into my eyes. Area 
go. Great job there. Thank you. That was Let's Dance, and that song uh, actually was produced by Nile Rogers. Reverb by Nile Rogers of which band? Of is Chic. Famous for? Of yeah. Chic, yes. All those hits. All right. Well, tell us, tell us a little more. We have one more song, right? Yeah. You want to jump into it or you want to? Uh, well, I want you to describe what that song means to you, Mr. Early. The song we're about to do is called Modern Love, which is another song that was produced by uh, the incredible Nile Rodgers of Chic. And it's a dance song that kind of is reminiscent of the Motown vibe. But once again, uh, a whole different sound, really, which many people had heard the song and didn't know that that was uh, David Bowie. We're getting some, some echo. garbling fine. echo here. Is yeah. that us or? Let's go ahead and do Modern Love. I just want to make sure they're hearing right. Don, can you just jump on and confirm that you're hearing this correctly? Absolutely. I, it... I can hear you. I hear a little a little bit of a sound, an additional sound. I'm not sure what it is. Um, you're, you also, you guys are, are really clear and loud whenever you're talking, and then you your sound does fade a little bit. So just, I mean, I don't know if you're, all your levels could go up a little bit more. I think people might enjoy that as well. Okay. Mains up, all the way up. We're all the way up. Can you hear us loud and clear? I can hear you. Awesome. All right, let's make some modern love. Catch a paper boy, but things don't really change. Thank you. 
<laughs> All right. Modern love there. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you so much. That's fantastic. So thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. I'm going to come back to James here really quickly uh, as well and uh, just say thanks a lot. Thanks to you and Ariel and, and uh, your extra over there. Uh, do you want to introduce your, your guitarist uh, you know, on the side as well? Name is the incredible Mr. Dylan Greengard. He's a dear friend. There you are, Dylan. Uh, and guitarist in our band. You know, uh, also he's a bass player, but he plays guitar for us. And we love Dylan. He's been in the band for a couple of years now. What a great guy. And we're happy to have him here today. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I wanted to thank you, James. I'm going to let you sit and relax just for a minute. I'm going to actually bring in Mona and we're just going to you know talk a little bit more about Music Beats Cancer and the incredible work that they're doing as well. So thanks a lot for, you know, everything that you just did. And thanks a lot, Ariel. I can see you still kind of out of frame. So <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. All right. We'll be back to you in just a minute, James. All right, Mona. Mona Javeri. So the Mona is the founder of Music Beats Cancer and the wonderful person who helped to, you know, build this, you, you know, these tributes. So uh, thanks a lot, Mona, for building these and, uh, you know, really doing all of this, you know, incredible work uh, in the space. It's really appreciated. No, we can't hear you, Mona. So hold on one second. Thank you so much, Don. I was, I was on mute there. there um, and thank you. So grateful to have you be part of it. Uh, so yes, I'll share a little bit about Music Beats Cancer, how we got started, um, and why music uh, became something that was integral to how we work. So my background, Don, as you know, I'm a scientist. And... Um, Way back, I we had a discovery in the lab, and this was for uh, ovarian cancer, which is one of the deadliest cancers for women. So it was basically a, a potential treatment for this disease, and uh, we spun out a startup. And I left academia, and I became what we call a biotech entrepreneur in order to advance this treatment and hopefully one day commercialize it and get it to women uh, who are in need. Um, so we started down this path only to realize that we ran out of money. And, um, and we tried and we tried to raise money here, there and everywhere. And, um, and at some point um, we decided we have to shut this down. We just can't keep continuing. But when we shut the company down, the innovation died and it fell in what we call the valley of death where all the great ideas go to die. And I realized that's not just my story, that's the story of thousands of innovators, not only in the US, but all over the world who have great ideas, but cannot move forward simply because they lack that requisite funding. The one, so that's, the one that's the one thing that I remember, honestly. So I, I interviewed yeah. you on my podcast and I remember that stands out more in my memory than anything else because, you know, just, Think about it, you know, from this perspective for a second, you could be on the cusp of the thing that could save who knows how many people and run out of money, right? That's the, I mean, to me, it's the the one thing that was probably the most eye-opening overall of being in this industry for years and years uh, to hear that, you know, hey, look, you could be so early stage that and have the thing you know, whatever the thing is, right? Whatever your innovation is, and it just get killed by not, by running out of funding. Yeah, you have the cure, you have a new way to diagnose disease early, but also Don, the reverse is true. I mean, there are breakthroughs that uh, currently save people's life uh, that a long time ago, nobody would fund. Um, and, and so the story of, of innovation is just littered with, you know, people, creators, you know, in our world, the scientists are creators, just kind of like musicians uh, that have something in hand, um, but they couldn't move forward. Or, you know, these celebrated people who, who we celebrate because their, their new ideas save, save lives. Uh, but when you look back, 
their story was no different than mine. They were scraping the ground to develop this new treatment for, you know, different, you know, this cancer or that cancer. And so um, uh, Music Beats Cancer was born specifically and exclusively to support innovators who are working on new treatments, new therapies, new diagnostics, screening tools, prevention tools, anything and everything uh, that could move the needle in terms of fighting this war in cancer. And we realized that, you know, the public uh, has been told over decades that scientists like myself are looking for cures, but we're not looking for cures. Mm -hmm. We innovate. Our innovations just get stuck in this valley of death. Um, so I realized that we needed to have a new narrative in, you know, in our public. Uh, we needed to share the power of innovation and get the people behind uh, fighting the war on cancer by supporting innovation. And I found that music was going to be critical uh, to, to shape this new narrative uh, and get our message out there. And so music and musicians have become our torch for change. And that's hence we became Music Beats Cancer. And um, we really, really value musicians. And David Bowie in, in particular was one of those musicians, right? Who he was, he, he was bigger than his music. Uh, and I guess that's how I see many musicians. They, they, they stand for something in the world. And he certainly was one of them. And sadly, he was taken by liver cancer, as you mentioned. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, just when I think about it, I mean, if anybody were to tell me today that they have, you know, liver cancer of, of all things, I mean, um, you know, it just seems like there's there's such a small percentage of people. Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure what the population is that normally gets it, but um, I mean, it just it, it's something that is not that common to run across somebody that says that they have liver, liver cancer, at least yeah. in my life. Right. It's not that common. It's I would say it's more of a rare cancer. I, mean, I think approximately 40,000 or so are diagnosed with this cancer each year in the U.S., um, it's a it's a very aggressive cancer, and uh, the survival rate, the five year survival rate, is about twenty percent, um, which is kind of dismal. But think about it, Don. Forty years ago, it was three percent. Wow. So you could say we've advanced. However, we have so much more to go. Um, and speaking of new innovations, uh, two immunotherapies have been approved in combination for, uh, and this was literally ju just last last October, two um, immunotherapy uh, in, uh, treatments have been approved for liver cancer, for especially for liver cancer where you cannot use surgery, cannot resect disease. Um, and this is a big deal because really there's so few tools to fight this disease. Yeah, so what, I mean, to that point, right, what, what, normally happens or what treatment paths normally are there um, for people that get liver cancer? Yeah, I, I would say the first line treatment is surgery, cutting mm. cutting out the, the liver um, or the, the portions of the liver that are diseased, followed by chemos and so forth. Uh, there is also um, a kinase inhibitor uh, because the problem with liver cancer, like most cancers that, that are hard to detect, is that they start in the organ and then they start to spread. And once they start to spread, they become more aggressive and they go to the, the surrounding organs. And then clinicians, there's just no understanding of how, how to hit them after that. Um, and you can't exactly go in and do surgery once you've got metastatic disease. So um, this really is, is the challenge for this disease and other diseases that are organs that are internal, that are hard to detect. And David Bowie, um, he, he battled this for 18 months um, and, and, and that was it. He didn't have a long time to, um, to survive this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a, I mean, it, it's so unfortunate. And I mean, for a lot of tumors that, that happen in people as well, they happen around really vascular areas, right? I mean, the tumor needs a good blood blood flow and it, it sort of, you know, likes to have lots of food as well so that it can 
you know, feed, which is really unfortunate. And, um, you know, all of that means that, you know, the battle is really tough. And so having these innovations becomes even more and more important. Yeah. And I would say one thing about immunotherapies, because I really want the public to understand that this is a new paradigm of treatment. We, we know about surgery, we know about chemotherapies, um, radiation. I, I would say most of the public knows about these three, you know, which have always been for a very long time, that been the front uh, line of defense. But immunotherapies don't go after tumors. They go after the immune system. Uh, they, they charge the immune system uh, because cancer has, has a way of shielding itself from the immune system. And this has been decades worth of, of trying to understand um, how the immune system is involved or what is happening when we have cancer. And, and I think we've figured out how to unleash some of it. I would say we're not there, but we're getting there. And I, I, I feel as a scientist and as someone who's been in this space for a long time, this is a beacon of real hope um, and not hype, but real hope. And I, I make that distinction and I um, hope that the public can keep their eye out uh, for new immunotherapies that, that will surface throughout these, these years. So, I mean, I, I, I mean, to that point, right. I mean, I, I know that there are different points where we're going to mention this as well. I mean, I just want to mention to people that are here that, you know, this, if this message is resonating with you, if you've enjoyed the music and things like that, please look for that donate button for music beats cancer, because, um, you know, as humble as Mona is, and she, you know, oftentimes won't mention it herself. Um, I absolutely will, because this is an important organization. I mean, if, 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 you know somebody that's had cancer and, you know, essentially, you know, you would have liked to have seen more drugs make it to the market to help save them. This is one way that that, that can happen. I mean, there are a lot of, lot of other ways, that certainly, that people can contribute. But I just wanted to, you know, quickly mention that as well. Grateful to you, Don. And yes, the donate button is above and there have been a, a good handful of donations coming in. So um, thank you to all who, who have contributed and who are uh, a part of uh, this um, virtual live stream. And I would be so grateful if you just check out our website, check out our work and follow us. Fantastic. And I, I wanted to mention to the audience as well. So if you have any questions about Music Beats Cancer or about liver cancer and the treatments, um, you know, please leave them in the chat box. Please let us know, you know, what your questions might be. Um, you know, also, you know, if there's, um, you know, anything else that uh, that we can help answer for you while you're here, that would be great. Um, but please, you know, go up above and, and click that donate button. You greatly appreciate it. All right. So, Mona, we're going to get on to the next uh, the next artist. And thank you for being here. I'm going to bring back uh, James and uh, and we're going to introduce our next artist as well. Thank you. All right. So welcome back, James. I can, I can, but everybody else can't. <laughs> I got to correct this again for, uh, for us. So there we go. Now, now everybody can hear you. Sorry about that. So, no, it's okay. It's like modern technology, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep me on my toes. And, um, so with that, um, James, I just wanted to, uh, you know, quickly bring you back and then, um, you know, I thought, what we might do is just share the screen as well with uh, with Deepak here, and uh, you know, let you guys let you guys chat for a second. Deepak, you there? Can you hear me, bro? I'm good. Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. You were cutting in and out. I guess there might be a gate on you. I'm not sure, but uh, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm turning the mute on and off because I don't want to create this feedback loop. So I'll just be keep doing that. Hopefully, you can hear me still. Yeah, I think we're okay. Leave it open just for a second, and then uh, we'll let you know if it actually acts up. It'll but, show. Uh, it'll show up. We've we've we tested this one pretty well, so yeah. <laughs> Deepak, we're just now meeting, but I'm really excited about what you do. You're also a multi instrumentalist, uh, as I see. I saw you playing violin like it was nothing, and uh, and then turned to the piano and jumped right on that, you know. And I'm sure you play other instruments. So we're excited to have you here. Uh, I have some notes on you and I'm gonna read that. It says, uh, you are a virtuoso singer, 
a composer, multi multi instrumentalist, actor, dancer, and record producer. So you are quite the overachiever, young man. Staying busy, staying busy. <laughs> nah, I love it. I love it. In this business, we have to do that. So it's great to have you here, man. And so you're going to perform some uh, David Bowie songs. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about yourself, though? What's what's your deal, bro? Yeah, so, um, yeah, my deal is it's similar to David Bowie in that I don't really understand what's going on, and I love everything and then just want to do it all. And I think that's why people like him and Prince and Michael Jackson and these other people have always been inspirations to me and, uh, you know, this eclectic sense of character of art. And, uh, you know, David, to, David Bowie to me is like almost like a hero character as I learn more about him. And again, I've been learning about him more in my later years. I'm, I'm a lot younger, but I did hear his music and didn't really know who it was growing up. And then right. just right. as an adult, you know, stepping into, you know, what it is to be an artist, what it is to be of service, what it is to um, you know, as you guys were mentioning earlier, he was a stand for so many positive things, you know, uh, in terms of even, you know, race and bringing mu black music, white music, you know, bridging gaps. And uh, right. I think it was right. really powerful, like what how he did that. And so some of the songs I chose, I chose from all over the place for that reason, like the song Heroes, which I'll do, uh, I believe first, um, you know, it's important because it's, you know, it's around the Berlin Wall, it's around that separation that that song was written during the Berlin series. Um, and so, you know, but overall, just, just, I want to get back to you, but just, he's just an inspirational figure, just an artist and just being and owning that expressive side of being a true artist beyond just a musician, but a real artist. Right. And he did that unapologetically. And that was probably my favorite thing about him. He, he wasn't afraid to try something. He wasn't afraid to include everyone in. And I know even with this right here, music beats cancer, if he was here, if he was alive today, I'm sure he would want to be a part of this. So this is a beautiful thing. Absolutely, you know, uh, he was just a, he was a man of service, and you know, to to know that this is what we're doing now as an organization is bringing people together in order to help with causes like that. I mean, he was a stand for so many causes that I'm sure he'd be excited to be a part of this without a doubt. Absolutely. So I, you know, I'm excited about also that again that you play music the way you do. Tell us some more about what instruments you play. Because I saw Cause you play violin. I'm excited to hear what else you play. Yeah, I mean, what I'm going to do today is about, uh, I think, three or four instruments. I've, if, if I turn the camera around, there's probably about 20 instruments in here. There's drums, bass, guitar, all that. I, I'm keeping it kind of simple today with sort of more of a, an acoustic style, live looping set with uh, some keyboards, some violin, some guitar. And then I'll be doing some singing. Um, and I'll be expressing these David Bowie songs in a artistic way, hopefully, that he would be happy with that I'm going to make it my own as well as hopefully honoring uh, the art that he created as well at the same time. Yeah. And awesome. if you follow Deepak on, on Instagram, he plays like this thing that looks like a little lightsaber, uh, oh. has a, a very strong MIDI sound to it, but uh, it, it's really interesting to see futuristic instruments as well. Wow. I'm excited, man. So let, let's check it out. All, All right. right cool. All right. So I'll do, um, yeah, man. I'll do Heroes first. Um, and, and again, that song to me uh, is really important because even the title itself captures, you know, so much power in just the word heroes. And, and imagine applying that to each of us as humans, that we can be bigger than ourselves and be out of our own egos and in a place of service to other people. That's what a true hero is if you really get into it. And I'm really, I grew up on superhero stories, Joseph Campbell, Hero's Journey, um, you know, Marvel, Star Wars, things like that, where you always see the, the, the journey of the hero to discover that really the greatest place they can be is in service externally. And that's when all of a sudden the magic happens, when they're not in their own self story of woe is me. And I think we as humans who get caught up sometimes in scarcity can, can transcend that into abundance. And I think David Bowie did that better than many. So I'll start with that song and then, yeah, then we can talk about the other ones. <laughs> I wish you could swim Like the dolphins Like the dolphins can swim 
Oh, nothing, nothing will keep us together. We can beat them forever and ever. Oh, we can be heroes just for one day. Just for one day, oh, we can be us. Just for one day. If you can't if you hear, can't the, hear applause, the applause, Deepak, uh, let me tell you, um, uh, everybody's loving it. You know, here on I'm watching, getting to watch the, uh, um, you know, the chat in between, and uh, everybody's loving it. You know, so thank you so much. Everybody loves your uh, your sound, and uh, we're gonna get right back to you again. But I just wanted to hop in and see if there's anything else that uh, you know James wanted to share or. Uh, that you wanted to share before you hopped to your second song. I, I would just I, say real fast that you're a fabulous singer. I love your rendition of of Heroes and uh, what a great voice you have. Very soulful and, uh, you know, just great music. I love what you did, man. You know, and uh, once again, an honor to David Bowie because he too uh, was a great singer. It was clear that he had some training in opera. I bet you you could sing opera and probably <laughs> anything else. We we say sometimes you could sing the phone book, bro. You could just open up a page and start singing names, and that would sound great. So great job, brother. No, thank you. An honor coming from you as a great producer. With you know, hearing your your story was just incredible, and uh, you know, it's an honor to be chatting with you about this. Um, so yeah, thank you. 
All right, so we'll turn it back over to you. We're going to hop back and uh, let you perform tonight. Oh, yeah. So tonight, I wanted to mention, uh, let me turn my reverb for one second. Yeah, so tonight is another one where we're talking about David being, you know, going out of his way to help others. And this song, if you guys look this up later, you know, I learned a lot of these David Bowie songs even more recently. I've got, you know, we all know the famous ones, of course, the big ones. Um, and fame, interestingly enough, I learned that song because I was the, uh, the star of a Cadillac 2015 commercial that was in the Super Bowl back then. And that was the song in it. If you guys remember, there was a prince on a big elephant riding in and that song fame was playing for the cadillac commercial if you go back you'll see that was me and that was a really in, uh, powerful introduction to that song so hearing your story about that uh james and the funk and how he brought that was really amazing and on that note that leads us to tonight which is another song where he was doing going out of his way to bring you know bring things together and tina turner and him did this as a duet which you'll find out if you if you go l listen to the song and look it up a bit um, and she was actually on Capitol Records. They were on that record label together, and she was apparently about to get potentially dropped from the label. Meanwhile, they're at the same exact time, they were signing him to like uh, an extension or they were about to go celebrate that night. And I, I got the story kind of vaguely, but I just remember that they wanted to celebrate with him that night, but he said no to them. Hey, actually, I'm gonna go check out um, my favorite singer, you know, and he was talking about Tina. And uh, so they ended up, the execs ended up going with him to see that Tina show and she blew them all away and ended up getting re-signed. And so she thanks him for that. And so that's the song tonight right here. And I'm gonna do this with, I, I actually produced a little bit of a track to go with it to, to make it a little more interesting. So hang tight for one quick sec. Yo, clap your hands out there wherever you are. This is a song about celebration. Everything will be all right tonight. Everything will be all right tonight. No one moves, no one talks. No one thinks, no one walks tonight. Yeah, tonight. Everyone, everyone will be all right tonight. Everyone. We'll be all right tonight. No one moves, no one talks, no one thinks, and no one walks tonight. Yeah, tonight. I am gonna love you till the end. I will love you till I reach the end. And I will love you till I die. And I will see you in the sky tonight. Yeah, tonight. <laughs> Tonight, 
Everything will be all right tonight. No one moves and no one talks and no one thinks and no one walks tonight. Yeah, tonight. Yeah, tonight. Oh, everything's gonna be all right tonight. Wow, again. Again, uh, big track, and uh, th thanks so much for for sharing that with us. Um, yeah, I know uh, online they they like the the rendition as well, uh, Deepak. So uh, again, watching the chat here, and uh, you know, just brought that comment back, um, James. I know you made a comment just before you started in terms of you know sharing the story. Um, I w unfortunately was the only one that could hear it though, so uh, you know, just thought I'd let you sort of, um, you know, share with G Deepak your thoughts on, you know, his story about the, uh, you know, the inspiration of the music that he's playing. I just thought it was great. The story that you just told about David Bowie and uh, Tina Turner working together and how artists, uh, that's kind of the backstory. A lot of the artists all were dear, dear friends and people don't even know that Tina Turner was dear friends with David Bowie, but also Tina Turner actually inspired and kind of half Way no, I don't even want to say halfway. Completely mentored Mick Jagger in teaching him his dance style and stuff. He even, he said himself that the moves that he does is him trying to do Tina Turner. This is Mick Jagger, so it's just lovely to hear the the story that you just told about how David Bowie and, and, and Tina worked together, and that the executives came out to actually watch her perform, and that actually helped her with her record deal uh, and maintain her record deal with Capitol Records. That was great. Thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, it's powerful. It just shows his generosity as an artist. You know, it's like, you know, I'm going to keep the reverb on because uh, it sounds more div divine. Um, no, but, but, you know, it's, it's, it's that there's that whole dog eat dog and you come to L.A. and people got that whole thing about competition and bring you know, and, oh, we got to get ahead at claw the next person. But that's scarcity consciousness. And I kind of keep bringing it back to abundance versus scarcity because David Bowie and you know, I love, that's my favorite thing in life. That's one of my biggest philosophies is, is being aware of transcending scarcity into abundance, being from a place of, of no fear. I'm like, oh, someone stole my song. Yeah, it's a concern. Copyright stuff's important. But if you're abundant, you're thinking, I got a million more where that came from. I'm, I'm living and breathing the gold of, of, in, of invention and creativity because it's not actually you doing it. You're just allowing the source to just come through you. And when you feel that, it's a divine, it's a higher level. And I think a lot of the greatest artists tap into that higher level of consciousness and then that again we can you know talk about art now we talk about science and innovation and cancer therapies you know it's being innovative thinking outside the box thinking of invent being inventive and humans are you known for being inventive when there's something about to, to to mess with humans that's when suddenly we create the most amazing solutions and so we can keep that in mind whether it's climate or cancer or anything else i think that's why art and science can be bridged together because it's still right at being on the cutting edge of creativity innovation and just channeling channeling something higher than the human self you know and i think david bowie was the epitome of that you know absolutely absolutely you know that, uh, music is medicinal as well and so we got to keep the music going because it, it, I believe, can help. It, who knows? Music might even cure cancer. We don't know. But I think if people are on a better plane and thinking better, living better, feeling better, they're going to probably be better. And that means uh, helpfully as well. So it all comes together. It all comes together. 100%. Very good. So we're going to turn it back to Deepak for the last song here. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to, uh, to, you know, just mention to everybody, you know, really quickly. So this will be the, the final song, but we're going to come back together uh, and sort of chat as an overall group before we say goodbye to you. So, uh, you know, please stick around right up to the very end um, and uh, enjoy this song from Deepak. All right. This is that one of the first songs he did and it, it was I actually it was heavily requested in the uh, in the post for this event and so this one is Space Oddity one of the most classic ones <laughs> Thank you. 
Crown control to Major Tom Crown control to Major Tom Take your protein pills and put your helmet on Ground control to Major Tom Commencing countdown engines on Check ignition and may God's love be with you Oh, this is ground control to Major Tom You really made the grade And the papers want to know which shirts you wear But now it's time to leave the capsule if you dare Oh, this is Major Tom to ground control I'm stepping through the door And I'm floating in a most peculiar way And the stars look very different today For here I am sitting in a tin can Far from the world Planet Earth is blue And there's nothing I can do Nothing I can do Ooh. 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 I'm past 100,000 miles I'm feeling very still And I think my spaceship knows which way to go Tell my wife I love her very much she knows Ground control to Major Tom Your circuit's dead There's something wrong Can you hear me, Major Tom? 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 Here am I sitting in a tin can Far across the world Planet Earth is blue And there's nothing I can do
Thanks so much, Deepak. Thanks for sharing. I greatly appreciate uh, that rendition as well. I mean, uh, I love it whenever these independent, you know, thoughts around independent people music come about. So it was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, great stuff. Man. Great stuff. Oh, thank you. Thank you, James. So I was just going to bring everybody else back in uh, really quickly. So we're going to go wide. You'll be able to see uh, Ariel here in just a second as well. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to uh, quickly thank everybody uh, for being here. So <laughs> thanks a lot. Yeah. Hey, um, what an awesome e evening of David Bowie and stories and Don. I mean, our chat box was, box was pretty active. I, I was reading all these uh, stories of David Bowie encounters and when people first heard these songs. Um, it's, it's just been so warming to, to come together around uh, David Bowie, his music, and, um, and him, I guess, you know, as Music Beats Cancers were about fighting cancer, uh, that he could be that torch for us as well. Um, so um, thank you, Deepak and Ariel and James and Don, you guys are outstanding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was with a great co-host for sure. Well, no, thank you, Mona, for sure, as well. I didn't get to thank you for bringing Ariel and I in yeah. and being a, able to be a part of this with uh, Deepak and Don and yourself again. Uh, what a great cause this is. And uh, an we just honor. want to remind everyone to hit that donate button for sure and help us uh, <laughs> help support this great cause that you, you're supporting here. It's great. Absolutely. If yeah. And so I, I also... You. I also just really quickly wanted to, uh, I mean, people that are at home are clapping on their own. I just wanted to share with you the applause really quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we've gotten plenty of those. I mean, their hands like all over the place and, uh, yeah, never, there, there are people now saying, okay, so let's start all over back at the beginning again. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yes, exactly. Where is the standing ovation emoji? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> These we we had an outstanding night of music. Um, both Ariel and Deepak. I'm just I'm so pleasantly surprised how all this came together. Not the music and the feeling behind the music. Um, I think that was the power right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I want to just thank everybody for, for being here. Really wanted to, uh, to just say, um, you know, thanks again to our artists. I mean, you guys have done phenomenal work. Thanks so much for, for being here and for supporting Music Beats Cancer and uh, for being with us tonight. Thank you for having us. It's been just such an honor. What a great conference <laughs> and to honor such an innovative, incredible life-changing trend-setting artist yeah thank you for this absolutely go ahead absolutely Deepak. yeah go thanks ahead, for Deepak. having us and extra you know i wanted to it was say by the way ariel it was great to meet you and hear you and that you guys were killing it the guitar the funk i was i was over here dancing and i i guess our, all we couldn't see all of our cameras but i was like if there was a multi-cam screen i was over here bopping to the funk you guys were throwing it down it was great to <laughs> great to share the stage with you and uh, mona thanks for having me as well and don and james everybody it was an honor to be here and david bowie is just a he's a superhero so i mean you know it's a it's an honor to be able to sing to, about him and for him you know mm -hmm. yes yes deepak we're uh, looking forward to hearing more from you as well as ariel you know you guys are both great <laughs> Collaboration, I hear. Collaboration. Yes. And honestly, Mona, we'd love to do this again. If you ever need us, please reach out. We're here for you if you need us. All right. We, so we always need we always need artists. So <laughs> anybody out there who's an artist, definitely let us know. Um, we're always looking for artists to be get behind this. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, just one last thing from, from both Ariel as well as Deepak. If people want to know more about your music, what is the best way to find you? Oh, well, uh, I guess I'll start ladies first here. I, you can find me at Ariel Marin Music 
on all of the platforms. Join my Instagram and I've got videos out right now on every platform, YouTube, check, check them out under Ariel Marin music. Fantastic. Deepak, Deepak. Yep. Same. Nice and easy. All one, all one name, just a DPAK, the Deepak with the all, you know, DPAK. And then if you type in future, that makes it easy to find everything. That's my handle on, uh, on TikTok and Instagram everywhere. I'm just, I haven't started TikTok yet, but I got, I, I got the page. I just haven't put anything on there, but I'm going to start soon because everyone's like poking me with it. But Instagram's where everything is popping right now. And then, you know, we got some YouTube and uh, I had some other bands and stuff. So yeah, easy to find just Deepak Future Instagram. And uh, yeah, easy, easy, easy. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. We greatly appreciate you being here one last time. If you haven't yet, please donate to Music Beats Cancer. And thanks so much for being with us. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye, everybody.